Hello lovelies, welcome to another Winter Days Vlogs. So I have just been on the go all day. It's nearly school run time, which is really lovely because there's actually sunlight. It's not as dark as it used to be. So our days are beginning to get a little bit longer each day and I'm definitely feeling it. It's lovely to do the school run when there's actually sunlight. But yeah, so today I had to pick up some bulk items that we had run out of and I love shopping it. We have a Asian supermarket nearby that mainly caters to South Asian cuisine. So you can get like 100 different types of rices there, which is so awesome. And I really love to go there to um, shop for rice. And also I can buy the rice in bulk. So sometimes I'll buy the 20 kg. Usually I buy the 20 kilo uh, bags and then I will decant into, I've got a plastic decant thingy that I put into because it makes it easier and we eat a lot of rice um, basically. But this time around, I decided to try something a little bit different. I wanted to try this extra long basmati rice because I just thought, oh, I've never, I've never heard of this before. I've never seen this before. And it was on special offer. They also had a 20 kilo bag, but I thought, uh, let's just stick to the 10 kilo because never try anything new until you know that it actually works for you and certainly don't get it in bulk. Uh, so, so I got it right. And as I went through the checkout, I was chatting with the lady at the checkout and she's really lovely. And I was saying to her, oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to try this extra long basmati rice tonight. And then she said, oh, and I was like, have you tried it before? And, then I got it. and she was like, yes, yeah, it's, it's not that much different from the normal one. So <laughs> now I know. Um, but anyway, I just thought it was uh, something different. So, yeah, so I got the 10 kilos of the basmati rice. I prefer basmati rice to long grain rice because I find that the long grain rice has got too much of the glutinous starch, excess glutinous starch um, and basmati rice is just so much better so that's what we get. The other thing that I got from the Asian shop is um, some red split lentils which I use this for my tomato and lentil soup, which is a family favorite. And it's a great one for even when we're hosting people over and we just have soup and bread. It's so easy to make and people really love it. And the key ingredient in there is the red split lentils. And so I buy these in bulk as well because it's a lot easier than having to constantly top it up. The other thing that I got is the beef paya or beef hooves bones that I used to make my bone broth I'm nearly out of the bone broth that I made way back in December I think and I have to make some more of the bone broth so I bought those there and that's where it's about the only place that I can get them really on a consistently regular basis sometimes the butchers in the market they will have them sometimes they won't have them but at least there I know that they will always have them so that's what I have bought in bulk. So it just makes it, it makes life a lot easier to have this in bulk. In a few days, I have to do a Costco trip. So I'll take you along with me on my monthly Costco trip. So that's going to be quite exciting. Today, I have to make some uh, chicken korma and rice, but I'm using chicken thighs today instead of chicken breast and that's simply because the chicken thighs were an offer and it was cheaper than the chicken breast so i'm gonna be using the chicken thighs instead um yeah so i will be catching up with you guys very very soon and yeah If you knock on my front door, chances are I'll greet you in an apron. They've become part of my uniform at home, so to speak. And even more than that, when I tie an apron on, whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon, it's like saying, okay, let's start this day. Let's do this thing. And it is so empowering. An apron is to me what a cape is to Superman. I think there's a special power in wearing an apron.
aprons are more than just helpful. So in aprons, most noteworthy quality is its helpfulness. It lives to serve. And an apron will unselfishly serve until it is threadbare and worn out. It protects us with literally every fiber of its being. They are like a magic shield, guarding us, the wearers, against the evil schmutzes and splatters of the world. Finding my perfect apron took quite a while and in the end I discovered it in the form of a vintage apron sewing pattern. The apron that I'm wearing there is something that I made myself and it is my favorite apron. So I think that the key to a really great apron is number one, the sash. I think it can only be described as a sash. It has to be just long enough to tie into a perfect bow at the small of my back and it has to have really deep pockets preferably two nice deep pockets like this one has and also it needs to have enough coverage to protect my nice clothes because before i started wearing aprons i used to be quite precious about my nicer clothes oh no my dear i wasn't going to wear my cashmere jumper if i was going to be cooking because heaven forbid some splatters end on it and i have to dry clean it which i almost never do but ever since I started wearing aprons, in particular this apron, I can confidently be in the kitchen even when I'm wearing my oh so precious stripy cashmere jumper. Now that I've finished my ode to aprons, let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing here. I like to decant foods because I buy in bulk and so it becomes very impractical to try and use the food items from the big bulk containers on a day-to-day -day basis. So in all the years that I have been cooking, because I don't particularly enjoy food shopping, I buy in bulk as much as is possible. I have accumulated a collection of, some might call them gigantic, uh, tubs that I keep things in. So with the rice, particularly bas basmati rice, you do want to keep it as airtight as possible. And you can tell there from the bag of the rice that it's very well packed in a foil lined uh, vacuum sealed thing. So I have decanted my rice into a big plastic tub, which then lives in an area of the kitchen that is cool and dry and dark. Same with the lentils as well. I don't like to use the lentils directly from the packet. I'll decant them into this smaller um, jar over here, this lidded jar, which I then will top up as and when is necessary. I use this really nifty little IKEA clips, which I find a very good at creating an airtight seal on whatever it is I need to uh, close off. And every time I go to IKEA, which is about once a year or once every two years, I definitely make sure to pick a pack of those. <laughs> To make the bone broth, I simply add in the beef paya. It's important to note that this one that I actually have is frozen solid. So when I do get to cooking it, I am going to add in the extra time in the instant pot to account for the fact that it's being cooked from frozen. And I simply add some filtered water and a tablespoon of salt. And that's all I put in my bone broth and it just comes out really delicious. And I'll pop it into the instant pot and I'll use high pressure. Normally, I would be doing maybe 45 minutes to 50 minutes. But in this case, I'm going all the way up to 70 because it is frozen and I doubled the recipe. I also let it release naturally. So it, uh, the pressure valve, I let that release naturally. So, whilst I'm doing the cooking, 
I also have to come in and check in on the laundry. Um, and so I thought this would be a good opportunity to give some feedback on these Lenore scent in wash scent boosters. So they're in this cardboard tube, just like a gigantic toilet roll, is <laughs> what I see. And the, the pellets are, they, they look almost waxy, like little wax pellets. Uh, let's see if I can show you that. Yeah. And they've got a very strong fragrance for sure. I think for me, the most confusing part was basically remembering that they go into the drum because my natural tendency for anything that's sort of smelly, smells, you know, not smelly like bad smelly, but smelly to make everything smell nice. I will put it into the conditioner section of the drawer. So, so that was, that, that took a while. And actually several times my kids, when they did the laundry, because on a, on a weekend, they have to do their laundry as part of my training them how to, you know, life skills of how to run a household, how to look after a house yourself. And a couple of times when they did their washes, they actually put the scent boosters <laughs> into where the fabric softener would normally go, the fabric conditioner would normally go. But it didn't seem to impact the level of um, scenty, scentness. And yeah, I, I honestly didn't think it made a difference putting it in that drawer and putting it in the in the drum itself so that was quite good i'm not sure they do leave a very strong it's a very strong scent and you know when you're used to how your clothes your clothes smell changing that smell can be a little bit disconcerting it can be just a little bit strange um so it's a matter of whether I think it's a smell that we want going forward or not, but also looking at the cost of it because these ones were, I think they were on a special offer or do I keep them just for the, um, the main reason that I actually bought them was for the boys' PE kits and their gym kits because when they get sweaty and they stink them up they can stink real bad <laughs> and they've been really good for that they've been really good for the uh, sweaty uh, things that needed to be decented so it's a case of maybe trying to find so this one is it's a branded one it's a Lenore brand so I think I will try and investigate if I can find some that are off brand so to speak like supermarket on brand because you know, they always do that stuff, don't they, where it works out uh, a lot cheaper. Oh, okay. I got my husband some Muppet socks because we love the Muppet Christmas Carol. They're so cute. Right, back to the kitchen now. So I have to get, so I've taken these ones out and I have to get another lot going into the dryer. But the laundry cycle is just throughout the day, there is laundry happening. I have some defrosted bananas that I'm going to use to make a banana cake. They don't look very nice when they're defrosted, do bananas, but basically I sliced them and froze them individually. And the idea was to make smoothies for them, but that never happened. But this time they're going to be made into a banana cake. banana cake, we're going to need 200 grams of butter, 200 grams of soft brown sugar, four eggs, 200 grams of flour, to which we'll add one teaspoon of baking powder vanilla as an optional flavoring and of course your pureed defrosted bananas they don't look very nice but they will taste really good and obviously i've prepared a cake tin here i'm using a square cake tin and so i'm going to use the mixer i start by creaming the butter and sugar using the mixer until they're very as light and as creamy as you can get it and then I will add the eggs to it 
and once i've added the eggs i'll start slowly adding the flour in order to try and prevent the mixture from curdling too much once all the flour has been added i'll then bring in the eponymous bananas which i just plonk in there I didn't measure out how much of the banana puree I actually had. It, I just went by eye. I think it was around 150 grams. And at this point, you might need to add a bit more flour depending on how you like your cake butter. With this, I'm baking it at 160 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. To start on the korma, I'm using some ghee for frying the chicken. So I'm just adding the ghee to a hot skillet. I prefer to use the cast iron skillet because I can get it really hot and with the ghee to a high smoking point so that I can sear the chicken thighs ready for cooking. I'm cooking the chicken thighs in batches because I've got two kilos. I'm making a huge batch because it's going to feed us for dinner as well as make some lunches for my husband and for my son for the rest of the week, packed lunches. And so once I have seared all of the chicken thighs, I'm just going to add two jars of the Aldi Korma sauce, which is a really good um, Korma sauce. I have found that it makes a Korma just as good as sometimes when I make a Korma from scratch. And I'll put it in my uh, big roasting tray and I'll cover it over with foil and put it into the oven for the oven it needs to be 180 degrees for the korma um, that's what i find works this is degrees celsius fan assisted and i finished it at just the right time as the cake was coming out so the banana cake was at 160 degrees so as i was taking it out i then had to whack the temperature up a further 20 degrees and the korma goes in for about 45 minutes the cake came out beautifully. It smelled very bananary, and the kids were very happy to be coming home to a banana cake smell filled home. Cut it up into squares, and that was dessert. And it's also going to go into packed lunches for the rest of the week. The korma came out gorgeous and delicious, as it always does. And the kids absolutely love this dish. And it's so easy to make, and it tastes even better the next day, frankly speaking. And so I was serving this up with some rice and some vegetables. But in the meantime, the bone broth had naturally released and that's what it looks like. I will be showing you how I freeze this tomorrow in tomorrow's video. So the question that you're all dying to know, was the long grain basmati rice worth it? Well, <laughs> much like the lovely lady at the checkout point said, it didn't taste that much different from the normal basmati rice. The only different was the only difference was that it looks a little bit different because the grains are nearly twice as long as the normal basmati rice. But the kids also said they didn't notice that much of a difference, but they love this dish. So it's a plate cleaner, as I like to call it. The kids will eat the plates until they're completely clean without any promptings. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for visiting with us. And until I see you next time, I wish you blue skies, health and happiness. Bye.